in uh, this week we'll be uh, performing the lab on uh, spring motion okay and uh, our objective is to understand the spring motion and we will be performing the experiment uh, by two methods one is the static method and the other is the dynamic method okay so question to you guys is uh, we know that in space there is no gravity okay so how do astronauts measure their weights in space okay because it's a big problem they face uh, because they have no gravity there in space it usually results in uh, loss of bone density and uh, muscle mass and uh, for astronauts that are staying for prolonged periods of time in space uh, it turns out to be a, a huge issue okay because they don't have any resistance to counteract their uh, uh, you know the motion okay and you might have guessed properly that uh, it has to do something with the spring motion and uh, today we'll see how uh, we can uh, look at the relationship between uh, uh, mass of an object and uh, the time period of oscillation of a mass that is attached to a spring okay so uh, in space uh, there are a couple of devices uh, the astronauts uh, use one is uh, called the slam d which is a space linear acceleration mass measurement device again uh, it's it has two springs and you uh, stretch the two springs and then it records the force that uh, is exerted by the spring okay and uh, the other one is uh, from russia it's called the body mass measurement device okay so let me play this video okay so you can see that the astronaut is uh, sitting on top of this uh, Uh, this device and he is performing some oscillations and from these oscillations uh, the mass of the the person is getting recorded okay now this is a huge uh, equipment occupies a lot of space and so continually there is effort going on to to reduce this uh, piece of equipment and uh, perform the measurement in some other manner okay uh, you have to again remember that spring motion is going to be one of the most important motions that you will encounter throughout uh, all the courses in physics okay um, in the first part of the lab what we are going to do is uh, we'll have a spring okay it has some uh, constant k okay and uh, this is the spring constant it is telling us um, how stiff this spring is or how stretchable this spring is and uh, we know if you apply a force then uh, depending on this k and the displacement you will have the the force uh, uh, of the spring that will counteract if i am pulling the spring okay so uh, in this situation what we have is uh, we have uh, our gravity acting on this uh, spring and uh, we are considering that let's take the spring to be massless to begin with and um, then um, we will attach a mass to the spring okay and uh, so you have gravity uh, that is acting in this direction all right and uh, once you attach a mass to the spring uh, because of the weight of the uh, the mass mg this spring will get stretched okay so the spring will get stretched to certain uh, position x which we are calling is the displacement okay from its standard position now when it gets stretched after a certain point of time this uh, restoring force kx will balance the uh, force of this uh, gravity okay and uh, this object will not move anymore okay so in that scenario your uh, summation of uh, net forces in the y direction will be zero because the object is not getting accelerated in the y direction okay and uh, since it's not moving that's why we call it as a static method okay and if you write down the uh, equation of the motion mg uh, minus kx should be equal to 0 which is the net force and from here you can find the value of k okay which is your spring constant all right now in the lab what we do is we take this um, mass we change the amount of mass that we are adding uh, every time to the spring and depending on the mass you will have a different displacement okay and what you are going to do is you are going to plot your mg on the y axis and you are going to plot your displacement on the x axis okay so that will give you the equation of a line y equal to mx this is basically equation of a line and uh, you know that uh, m is the slope of the line and uh, 
what we are going to do is we are going to calculate the slope and that slope will give us the value of k which is our spring constant okay so remember the spring constant is k and uh, its unit is going to be in newton per meter okay that is uh, easy to see mg is force force is newton x is meters and so si unit will be newton per meter okay so that is the task for the static method we want to plot a uh, curve of force versus displacement and whatever the slope is will give you your spring constant okay so the table uh, looks something like this it is available in your manual you can uh, replicate it uh, in your notebook or you can um, do it uh, in excel as long as um, the other calculations you show that you have done uh, by hand okay and uh, what we are going to do is um, we uh, apply different mass and uh, uh, for one instance we will keep adding mass for example if we start with uh, uh, 100 uh, grams right and uh, then we can uh, raise it to 150 grams and then we can go to 100 and then we can go to 50 grams okay and then what you are going to do is you are going to do the measurement again while uh, unloading the the spring okay so take a 50 gram off then again you will get 200 gram and then again you do a measurement okay so you will do uh, two measurements at each uh, position and that will give you a better averaging and better result okay and once you, once you do that once you find the mean displacement and then um, you know the force force is just mg and uh, displacement is what you are recording in your in your uh, equipment and uh, you can plot the uh, uh, force versus displacement curve it should look like a straight line and once you find the slope which is here you will get the value of your spring constant okay when you're uh, when you're adding load you can choose any value okay you can choose any value okay, because sir. this uh, uh, force versus uh, displacement it is valued for the entire range until the range until the point where your spring is ideal spring that means uh, your spring doesn't get uh, broken or it doesn't get stretched to a certain extent ki uska deformation ho jaye hai na so so until that point you can put any value okay, okay so in the dynamic method what we are going to do is we are going to stretch the spring beyond the equilibrium position okay so here in the first scenario uh, the forces are balancing out and so equilibrium has been attained now what we are doing is we are going to stretch it beyond this point okay and once we stretch it beyond this point there will be a restoring force that the spring is going to exert and that is going to cause oscillations okay and these oscillations we are going to time them and record uh, the time taken for let's say uh, 20 oscillations okay or 20 vibrations we call it and then uh, we will do for each run we will do twice and uh, once we have the time period for 20 oscillations uh, measured twice then we can take a average okay and uh, in this method what we are going to do is we are going to uh, again change the mass right so suppose you start with 100 okay then you can choose 170 for example as mass p okay and um, again so then 170 will be your initial mass and then again you can change the mass to let's say 220 it can be any random value between these two okay now the reason why we are doing this is uh, because if you look at the uh, formula for time period of the oscillation of a spring uh, we know that it is 2 pi root m over k okay so uh, which comes from 2 pi over omega right Where omega is square root of k over m right so if i take any uh, arbitrary mass a then time period for a will be 2 pi square root of mass of a divided by k that should be the situation for uh, a mass a right and for a mass uh, situation b the time period will be 2 pi square root of mass of b divided by k okay so simply speaking if you are using 100 gram it will have um, 100 gram mass here and it will give you some time period and if you choose 170 gram then you will get a different time period okay corresponding to the second mass and from here you can calculate that uh, if you take the square and um, do some uh, clever mathematics in which you are isolating the value of k you can get the expression for k as 4 pi square 
the difference between the masses divided by the difference between the square of the time periods okay so that is what you get the formula okay so again going back to our situation what we are going to do is we are going to start with some mass let's say 100 gram we are going to take the two time periods okay the values here and then we are going to do the average so we will get an average time period a which is this value here okay then we are going to again repeat the experiment we are going to choose a different mass which is going to be higher mass let's say 170 grams okay then we are again going to measure the time period 1 and 2 take the average okay and that should give us the time period value of b okay so that is giving a value of b but we are measuring for 20 vibrations right we want the time period for each oscillation so you have to divide these values ta and tb by 20 okay and so that will give you the time period of each oscillation okay and once you have your ta and tb you already know your ma and mb and uh, you can substitute it in here and you can find the value of k all right so this is the dynamic method of uh, measuring your uh, spring constant k okay uh the the idea is the more oscillations you do uh, it is better um, in averaging out the um, errors right so suppose you are doing only five oscillations so there is a there is a possibility of committing more error okay so if you choose uh, uh, choose at least 10 or above 10 okay you know the manual is available okay so this is the manual it is completely available online you can download it okay the tables and everything are given Uh, like i said you can choose uh, uh, different vibrations you can choose any random value of mass and um, just uh, make sure you have at least 10 or more vibrations that you're doing okay and um, then um, second thing is um, there is a video that shows the equipment and shows the um, how the calculations have to be done okay i have posted the link uh, in the chat window so you can uh, see this uh, video uh, on youtube it is uh, of the experiment that uh, is there in the lab okay um, and um, uh, thirdly what we have is um, uh, there is a link on the last page uh, of the simulator where you can do, go and perform this experiment okay uh, i have already uploaded this presentation okay so if you go to your uh, google classroom the lab presentation too uh, is all, the document is already there okay so you can see uh, the uh, the link of the of the of the website where you have to perform this uh, experiment okay so let me demonstrate the simulator once and uh, then you guys can go ahead and start performing your experiment okay so just cut and paste it in your browser uh, i am using google chrome okay so hopefully uh, it should work for you guys as well Uh, i didn't have any problems with uh, running the simulator okay so the the name is uh, masses and spring all right so all you have to do is you have to click this uh, play option and uh, there is uh, introduction and uh, vectors and energy you can go through this stuff uh, but the important thing you want to do is you want to perform this lab okay so we want to click on this lab option all right and it should open the window like this okay so this is your simulator you have many options of uh, of um, performing this experiment okay so uh, i can choose my spring constant so what we will do is we will choose any uh, spring constant some random value you can choose okay so just keep a setting whatever you want all right and um, uh, i am choosing on the smaller side so that i can have easy oscillations you know if i choose a large spring constant then it is going to be very stiff and the oscillations are not going to be uh, that uh, smooth okay so i am going to choose on a smaller side and uh, let me choose a mass uh, let me choose some random mass like we were discussing you know let's choose some uh, uh, 70 or something 75 or whatever 79 you know and once you choose the mass you can see the um, number change here 79 grams so you can just uh, click on this mass and uh, attach it to the to the spring okay and it's going to stretch it okay and uh, i can stop it to the maximum point where it is stretching so now it is in um, basically equilibrium condition where the mg is cancelling out the kx okay so uh, 
to measure the um, displacement what i can do is i can choose this um, uh, movable line as a reference point okay so that will help me decide uh, where my um, uh, displacement zero is and where it is ending okay so there is an option here you can see ruler so i can keep a ruler here right to measure it and uh, let's take this mass off for now okay so that is uh, you see the top of this is where i'm taking my reference point okay and i'm keeping it as zero here so now i'll attach this mass and uh, i'll stop it certain extent okay so now uh, this is my zero so i i can move this around here and um, it was to the top of this number right so that value here is about uh, 15 mm okay so i am getting a 15 mm uh, uh, extension when i attach uh, 79 grams okay so what you can then do is uh, that is your value of x you can calculate mg so let me increase uh, the value to let's say uh, some 121 okay so now you can see that uh, the value has changed to 23.5 or something okay so depending on the mass you can have different um, displacements okay and uh, just choose any random value of spring constant okay and uh, you can you can of course you can increase you see if i increase the spring constant then it is not getting stretched too much right because uh, it is very stiff spring so it's very hard okay so choose a value where you want and uh, then you can perform okay aap pehle apna lab ka content likhoge na aim and procedure and everything एंड देन जो डेटा और एनालिसिस का पार्ट है उसमें मैं कह रहा हूँ आप बाई हैंड अगर आप ड्रॉ करना चाहते हैं ऑन अ ग्राफ पेपर यू कैन यूज अ ग्राफ पेपर टू ड्रॉ द कर्व और यू कैन परफॉर्म इट इन एक्सेल और यू कैन डू इट इन डेस्मोस लेकिन जहां भी आप ग्राफ बनाओगे एक फोटोग्राफ की वो आप अपने पी डी एफ में अटैच कर देना है ना लाइक एड अ पेज ऑफ दैट फोटोग्राफ इन द फाइनल पी डी एफ सो दैट आई हैव द एनालिसिस पार्ट ऑल्सो है ना don't forget to include uh, the curve so uh, like you can include a picture of uh, this uh, uh, this simulator also uh, axis labeled hona chahiye hai na and uh, i should be able to see the numbers i should be able to see the equation of the slope i should be able to see what the slope is how you have calculated it hai na wo sari cheeze honi chahiye usme port should be concise in the manner that um, the other person like i am reading it i should be able to understand it but if you want to do the dynamic method basically you have to stretch this uh, mass beyond the equilibrium point and you let it go and then it will do some oscillations you see and now i can time this oscillations that i am doing okay so let's take the scenario uh, we have chosen that the gravity is 9.8 that's good we are on earth we can perform this experiment on moon also if you want um uh, if you are adventurous enough you can even do it uh, in one other planet and give me the results uh, that would be interesting to see what value we get okay um uh, damping we are going to apply no damping for now uh, we want simple harmonic motion later on we can do the same experiment with damping that will be interesting as well okay now to measure the time period i have kept the damping zero so it will be completely harmonic motion so it should keep on going forever and there should not be any uh, resistive forces stopping it okay so now you can see the object is doing the oscillations okay very nice so uh, i can use the timer there is a timer option here let's bring it up okay so let's say um, i want to record for 10 oscillations okay so i'm going to keep my marker from where i want to record so every time it hits this uh, red line i am going to record a number okay so i am happy with that so let's start now 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 right so 9.64 is the time i am getting for 10 oscillations okay so that is my first reading now i can again uh, perform the same experiment again and see uh, what value i get you know because there is a little bit error i will always get and remember you have to do for one complete oscillation okay so basically the mass is going i can slow it down so now it is in a slow mode so you can clearly see okay 
uh, we have uh, now let's start counting so it will be going all the way down and all the way up so that is one oscillation okay so now it is doing the second oscillation all right so now i'm going to start okay so now it is still doing the first oscillation okay so that is now one right and it's going very slow and that is two okay and so i am now i'm going to give it a normal speed so i have three four five six seven eight nine ten right so again i was a little bit late you see so now i'm getting 10.13 okay so if you are worried you can use the slow pace and measure at a at a slower pace okay so that will give you more accuracy okay and like we were discussing first you can choose 121 gram and then you can change it to some other value like 1 148 grams for example choose any random value whatever and um, and uh, the the principle should hold in in all the cases okay and uh, again you can use this marker to uh, record uh, the period at uh, one position okay so every time the mass is uh, coming and crossing this line that is uh, my marker where i am recording the time so i can start like that and so now it is going and performing the oscillations have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 right so 10.95 i have a different time period for a different mass that i have attached okay and then you can enter the information in the table and uh, and calculate it okay so that is how you do the uh, dynamic method i think that's it for today i i'll let you guys go and then you can just perform the experiment uh, yourself okay